going back to my childhood, I was always interested in um, MG's uh, Triumphs of the 1970s. Um, um, I, liked, I liked their uh, characteristic design, um, individuality. Um, but when I was growing up uh, in the sort of mid to late 1980s, um, the TR7 in particular caught my eye. And I think that was primarily due to the, uh, the very uh, distinct wedge shape of the car. Obviously over the years, the cars have become uh, rarer sights, uh, a classic in their own rights, uh, despite the, uh, the controversial image the car had when it was you know, first launched in the, in the uh, mid 1970s. And I think now um, they're really um, becoming a classic in their own right. Um, but, but yeah, um, that's, that's really how my interest in classic cars arose. When I was a child growing up in the late 1980s, I was in receipt of a, a Scale Electrix one Christmas, although it was a, uh, a Mighty Metro's um, um, rally uh, set, I actually acquired a couple of TR7 Scale Electric cars and I, and I really uh, took to the shape of the car and thought that's a, a, a very futuristic concept looking car and, and yeah, my, my, my sort of love affair really started all those years ago. I, I always thought I would I would eventually purchase a TR7, and it was it was not a uh, a task which um, was done overnight. It took me quite a long time to source a really nice example, which I believed I have today. One of the last TR7s to leave the production plant at, at Solihull um, in 1981. This this particular model was one of the last 1600 approximately to leave the plant at Load Lane, and uh, before production finally ceased in early October of 18, 1981 and this this car has been meticulously um, looked after although it doesn't have a great deal of history previous owner actually had it dry stored for uh, over 10 years and so it's in it's in exemplary condition okay so this is a two liter Triumph TR7 it's a standard Triumph Dolomite engine which was fitted to most TR7 the, uh, the V8s uh, came a bit later where they used the, the Rover SD1 engine. It's got a five-speed manual gearbox delivering approximately 105 brake horsepower. It has a 3.9 to 1 uh, rear, rear axle. That's just for a standard ratio for this car. is very enjoyable to drive it's, it's actually a very responsive two litre engine and that probably has something to do with the the weight of the car it's just over a ton certainly in the lower ratios the uh, performance is is exemplary from a handling point of view the car handles it, it's it's very responsive and um, it's a real pleasure to drive so when i bought the car the odometer read 8500 miles so if you consider a, a 33 now 34 year old car um, having that low mileage the car has never really been uh, been uh, driven to excess. Uh, it's been it's been very well preserved. I've I've had the car for uh, just under a year now, um, having bought it in August of 2014. I've put about a thousand miles on, so it's still very very low mileage. And um, yeah, uh, it's it's one of the car's great assets. And uh, and I don't think there are many TR7s left with such low mileage. most favourite element of this car to me is the, uh, the convertible roof, the, uh, the drop head coupe. Just knowing on a nice summer's day, you know, I can put the hood down and enjoy a drive, which makes for a, an all around very pleasurable driving experience. Yeah, I'm very pleased with my purchase. It's an enjoyable car to drive. It's a weekend cruising car. I take my seat at Ibiza uh, to East London every day. I do about an 80 mile round trip. There's nothing better than driving back home to Saffron Walden uh, on a beautiful, clear, sunny day. Knowing that the hood's down on my TR7 and just being able to go for uh, a drive around the country. Um, this is a driver's car and that's where it really comes into its own element. And uh, long may it continue. <laughs>